Hey, thanks for joining everybody. So first thing I want to talk about today, right? Uh, the, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I talked about how the shopping cart app that I had put out, uh, specifically version number seven, where I was trying to fill in all the blanks for like the totals and everything. Uh, well, it was woefully inaccurate. It just, it just wasn't, wasn't fitting the bill. You know what I mean? So I redid it a couple of weeks ago. I finally got around to finalizing all the little things that I did over there. And so in the description of this video, there is a link to shopping cart 7.2, uh, the totals redo. And I just kind of want to go over real briefly what it is that I did inside this app, because I actually did do a few other things afterwards that kind of, I smoothed the little things out. So where are you going? Another way. That was the wrong button. <laughs> so uh, real quick, if we just go and look under the hood for the 7.2 shopping cart app, the things that I want to point out, um, I largely talk about everything that I've done inside the info section here. So you can go through here and find out everything that's done. But I just want to kind of point a few things out. So obviously I put in um, all of the stuff from the previous video is still here, right? Where I had um, individual prices for the products. And then I also included the ability to have a product price type where you could, if you wanted to do a product by weight, right? You could have that option now and even choose what unit of measure do you want to use? Pounds, kilograms, inches, like you fill in the blank, whatever you want. So that's there. That was what I put in in the original stream. The thing that I changed was if you go to the order table and you look at the editable column, right? Uh, basically what I did is I, I realized, well, you know, I should probably lock down these orders after the status has been marked as complete. That way you can't go back to the line item and say, oh, I'm going to change that after we finish the order, right? Can't do that. It's been locked in type of thing. So I went through and I locked down the order and the order details. If we go look at the order details. You can see these have a whole bunch of things on them too. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I left a few columns open like the, uh, the order detail notes. You'll notice that it's completely editable over here. There's no formula like there is up here. Uh, I did that so that, you know, after the fact, you know, even after you mark something as complete and done, sometimes you still need to be able to add notes. So that's why that's there. Um, other than that, uh, the last thing that I added in was I noticed that uh, the, so when I have a product that's already a part of the shopping cart, so like this one, you see the green check, that means that I've already put product number one inside my building order. If I go and I look, you can see we have product number one. Uh, I noticed that when I was tapping on the thing, um, it brings up this input box here, um, but it wasn't bringing up the, the specifics for the item that I clicked on. What it was originally set to do was to open the was to run the input on the last item entered into the shopping cart which doesn't work if i'm not clicking on the last item you follow me so what i had to do here is if i just go and i look so this customer products card view has this um right here in the white space has this tap this product thing right so if we go and we look at that on the products on the products um inch? oh customer products i was like wait it's not showing the thing um customer products here we are so tap right um it's this ref set input quantity thing i had to change this and so what i had done um ref set input quantity the thing that i had to do is i had to go through here and i had to set this so that it would do a lookup of the product that I'm clicking on. So like I click on product number five, it needs to do product number five. I need to look that up in the building order details slice and get the actual record. So that was the uh, only major change that I did to the shopping cart 7.2. Uh, and all of this really just kind of smooths out a little bit of the roughness that was there and fills in some of the gaps that were left way back in the beginning. Because these things should have honestly been been caught and put in there like right at the very beginning you know what i mean but anyways 
That's the updates that I've done to the Shopping Cart 7.2. You can check that out. It's on my profile link in the description.